let's start with a simple question. So for people who don't know, who is Banksy? Besides the most famous, notorious, captivating, and controversial artist alive. If you asked me that question a couple of months ago, I would have thrown anonymity into that long list as well. But unfortunately, times change. But now, a series of court cases, including one launched this week in Australia, could change everything. You see, for a long time, over three decades in fact, no one knew who Banksy was. No one knew a name or a face. The man was like a ghost. It's one of the main factors that made him so successful, and even he'd admit that. If people knew who he was, his artworks probably wouldn't be worth as much. Works by the mystery street artist Banksy sell for tens of millions of dollars, boosted by speculation about his identity. Both to um, give him the freedom to do what he wants to do and uh, the freedom not to have to do things like this. Like what? Like this, be on the radio, do press. Um. Being an anonymous graffiti artist doesn't just help you stay out of jail, it also helps you become infamous. And it turns out, people quite like a guy breaking the law when he's got no face. It also turns out that people like incredible art. Some would debate the latter, but it doesn't really matter what they think. A lot of Banksy, a lot of street art is just so kitschy, so silly, so, in a way, just dumb. Let's go back to the simple question of, who is Banksy? And I say simple because it used to be the opposite until countless British journalists started painting his real identity on every blank wall for a few extra clicks. Pest Control Limited, aka Banksy's company, has been accused of defamation and is now being called to court. We've so far had six decisions out of the seven that we started. Uh, all six of those were wins, complete wins, uh, with costs against Banksy. Banksy yet to pay those costs. We might even um, take action to bankrupt him. <laughs> The first legal defendant listed on the documents is a man named aka Banksy. This is the first time any legitimate connection has been made between the two, leading many people to believe that they are one in the same, especially given loose ties to the alias all the way back in 2008. So who is Banksy? The most famous artist alive that has remained anonymous for so many years. Who is this man? Well, it's But if that's where this video ended, I wouldn't be making it. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Private Internet Access. Ah, oh, Not again. If I had the world's most transparent VPN provider downloaded on my PC, that not only encrypts your internet connection, is available for all platforms, protects an unlimited amount of devices at the same time, and comes with entertainment benefits such as unlocking region locks content on streaming sites such as Netflix, maybe my entire livelihood and life's work wouldn't be about to get deleted. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I installed this yesterday. Browsing the internet with an unencrypted connection is like sending a private message to a group chat. The best way to prevent this is by using a VPN. By using the link in my description, you can download private internet access for 83% off along with four months free. Signing up is risk-free and the service comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Everyone needs a VPN to stay safe online, so why not download private internet access who was kind enough to sponsor today's video. Usually, criminals who are most notorious are the easiest to catch. Usually. The graffiti artist known as Banksy is setting his sights on New York. He plans to spend the rest of the month making the city his canvas. October 1st, 2013, midnight. Away from home, Banksy planned to terrorize the streets of the Big Apple for an entire month, creating a new piece of art every 24 hours. Illegally, of course. You better lie to me to have to fit here. Night one. Fittingly, Banksy starts his escapade by painting two kids grabbing a spray paint can out of a sign that reads, Graffiti is a crime. I have no Once this piece was confirmed to be by the man himself, all hell broke loose. You Citizens of New York started going block to block just to find his next piece of work. And the NYPD 
would begin to run around like headless chickens, trying to catch Banksy in the act. To be honest, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity because the thing is, is they're here and then they're gone. Night five. Banksy creates a scenic jungle environment in the back of a dirty abandoned white truck. He dubbed it the Mobile Waterfall. Night nine. Things took a slightly more serious turn. Tucked away on 159 Ludlow Street, a car was repurposed to paint a commentary on the 2007 Iraq conflict, accompanied by WikiLeaks audio of US soldiers killing innocent civilians and two journalists in the crossfire of war. Hey, uh, I need to get the, rat, the brass to drop ramps. I got a wounded girl. We need to take the rest of my. Oh, it's their fault for bringing their kids to a battle. That's right. Night 11. Banksy let loose a stuffed animal slaughterhouse delivery truck that toured the meatpacking district for the following two weeks. The YouTube video that accompanied the stunt was aptly titled Sirens of the Lambs. Night 13. A stall was set up in Central Park, managed by an old man. The only thing for sale was 100% original signed Banksy canvases for $60 each, meaning countless people passed up on $60 art that now sells for hundreds of thousands. Night 31, on the final day, Banksy recreated his bubble tag with real balloons near an exit sign, signifying his departure from New York. A perfect way to end his vacation and a successful NYPD escape. Before Banksy would shred the very painting he sold for millions in front of everyone's eyes, before Banksy would create the iconic bulletproof vest for Stormzy's Glastonbury set, he would start spray painting the dull walls of his hometown Bristol, going by the name Slick. One night, while hiding from police under a garbage truck, he noticed that there were stenciled numbers on the vehicle's bumper. And that's when he had the realization that stencils might be the answer to his biggest problem. The time between starting and finishing a piece of graffiti was far too long, which in turn created a lot of risk. But stencils would allow to make bigger pieces quicker, faster, and make him virtually uncatchable. Plus, no one else was doing it. It was a practical decision that resulted in a unique aesthetic, which would adopt under his new name, Banksy. You can't do that here. It's to take pictures. Right, not here, not that. No, that's graffiti. That's not graffiti. No, no, but that's not, that's not graffiti. Then remove it, that's, you guys that's an go. art. That's an art. You guys need to go. Banksy had started to gain quite a reputation, and in spring of 2006, the artist flew to LA where he would meet a man named Terry, a man who had dedicated his life to documenting some of the world's biggest street artists. He was like more than any drugs to anybody. He was obsession. And now, Terry was a man who had the opportunity to show Banksy the best spots to hit in LA. I was in downtown Los Angeles, one day, my phone rings. Hello, hello, this is Shepard Ferry. How are you doing, Terry? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. do you have any wall? Because uh, I have Banksy here and uh, I would like, and I said, what? You have who? I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, there is Banksy here. And I'm like, where are you? I drive you if you need to go anywhere. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything, I'm not doing anything. And, 
any time. Terry made himself indispensable to Banksy, and in return, Banksy let Terry document his process for the foreseeable future, even in his escapades back in England. I always avoided cameras because what I do is in um, a bit of a legal grey area, but I brought Terry over to London because it seemed like a good idea to start video in the work. I mean, we had to because, you know, a lot of it was starting to disappear the next day. I first started to hear about Banksy when I was a little kid. Since half of my family grew up and still lives in Banksy's hometown, Bristol, I became aware of his antics fairly quickly. I thought his artwork was great, but I didn't fall in love with what he was doing through his graffiti. I fell in love with what he was doing through his documentary, Exit Through the Gift Shop. After numerous months of Terry following Banksy around, it was finally time to convert those countless boxes of tapes into the documentary Terry envisioned all those years ago. Six months later, Terry presented Banksy with a one hour and 30 minute movie he called Life Remote Control. Peace to the whole world. You have to keep an eye on the big picture. I told him I'd never seen anything like it, and I wasn't lying about that. Yeah, I was faced with that terrible thing when somebody shows you their work and everything about it is shit, so you don't really know where to start. He's like, uh, it's good, you know? It's good, you know, it's good. It turns out that Terry wasn't really a filmmaker, but instead just a guy with a camera who happened to know a lot of street artists. After Banksy convinced Terry to leave the tapes with him in hopes of creating the street art documentary he dreamed of, Exit Through the Gift Shop started production. Terry went off to become a successful artist himself, going by the name Mr. Brainwash, and Banksy made the early decision to flip the script. Instead of making himself and his peers the main subjects of the documentary, he opted to make Terry's journey through the underground world of graffiti the main focus one of the smartest decisions I've ever seen made in a doc. Well, the, the film is uh, the story of what happened when this guy tried to make a documentary about me, but he was uh, actually a lot more interesting than I am. So um, now the film is kind of about him. I mean, it's not gone with the wind, but there's probably a model in there somewhere. From when I was a kid to today, this has always remained my favorite documentary ever created. I've watched it countless times, and it's really what made me fall in love with how Banksy approaches art. Despite the documentary being about Terry, I ended up finishing the documentary more interested in Banksy than anything else. This is just one example of Banksy's intentions working against him. Most art critics hate him, which is why most normal people like him. Yet despite his criticism of the modern art world, Unfortunately, most normal people can't afford a $500,000 spray painted wall. The more Banksy attempts to criticize the establishment, the more they profit. But what's the alternative? I know bleeping out Banksy's real name isn't gonna deter anyone from finding it out after they click off this video. Much like a lot of Banksy's work, this video might have the opposite effects than intended. By shredding the painting, I might have unintentionally created more appeal, despite my intentions being pure. So, I guess I'll end with the same question we started with. Who is Banksy? Banksy is a guy from Bristol, England, who pulled off some of the most impressive and captivating street art all around the world for decades. From huge political murals to fully functional hotels, there seems to be no limit to what he can execute. In the process of creating spectacles, he became the most famous living artist alive, or maybe the least famous, depending on how you see things. He made the best documentary I've ever seen and is a genius in every sense of the word. Banksy is not Banksy is Banksy. A man who once said, imagine a city where graffiti wasn't illegal. A city where everybody could draw whatever they liked. Where every street was awash with a million colours and little phrases. Where standing at a bus stop was never boring. A city that felt like a party where everyone was invited. Not just the estate agents and barons of big business. 
Imagine a city like that, and then stop leaning against the wall. It's wet. You don't mind if I pass on your details to uh, the police? No. What details have you got? <laughs> I don't know put your real on name. The mask. I know your real name. Do you?